the economy section. Uh, we get Hello, Town of Scarborough. I'm Logan Granger with the Scarborough Fire Department. A while back, we completed our public safety building in the Oak Hill area of Scarborough. While we completed it, COVID hit the United States. We deemed it not safe at the time to uh, give in-person tours of our new public safety building. That has been a long time.
Just just to lay, 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 lay. Do you have any weenies this morning? I think he needs to be on more committees. He doesn't have enough to do. He drives a bus. We don't drive a bus. Yeah, we do. 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 We it's specific to the very first sentence of, of, of the write-up. I think, in a way, it sort of um, you know, raises a broader question. Sort of, you know, the, the primary purpose behind economic development is typically to achieve new gains in the economic growth of the community, which seems pretty circular to me. Right. So, like the purpose of economic development is economic development. Um, but to, so that's you know, in itself kind of a circular statement, I think. But also, I think does sort of raise the broader question of sort of what, what are we, what is it that, you know, what is the objective and what is, you know, what are the presumed benefits of growth? Mm -hmm. so, and the deficits. And then, well, I think that it's, I think the next sentence, it pretty much starts to explain the primary purpose was, so I really can't just somehow avoid the stretch. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Economic growth. Right. Yeah. And I have a question. The, this section, the intro, mm -hmm. I know, I know I have the economic, but there's data in here that relates here. And one of the things was the percentages, of how we get the revenues, the percentages. Uh, it talks about 69% of the revenue from the property taxes. Um, it doesn't split out residential <coughs> versus commercial. Which I think is really important because you work to get commercial up to lessen the burden of the agenda. So it also doesn't add up to 100. Yeah. The percentages don't add up to 100. Like, well, where's the rest of the income coming from? I'm hoping it's around a year of four dominant. Yeah. And the other thing about revenues is you collect a lot of revenues from all the sources, but there are a lot more revenues out there than I need. The oversight. We do a lot of things and we do put restrictions on you know, approvals for approvals for somebody to build and, and uh, that they need to do a certain thing, but there's no tick with file that brings them back to you know checking that detention pond or checking you know detention. You know. The, the round is like 13 Oh, that's not that. Yeah. So we're, we're they're clearly missing something there. It's just, just for one point of clarity that might not have been spelled out. Um, so the return on investment study, this is actually separate from the comp plan. This group that wrote the return on investment study is also doing a chapter in the comp plan that's going to. So we'll see. But I just wanted to. I think to, those are things that yep. you need to, need to put in. That's the that's the part that we're missing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a little unclear to me how it, everything gets woven back together in the, in the full plan. A, a simple example of the yard sales. Did that person, I know that they, know that they get a list of people in the yard sales this weekend, but are they truly checking up on them and is there a way in which you could uh, post the permit at the site so that in, in a bright color and change the color on a weekly basis, on a weekly basis so that and it's only a $5 fee, so the pennies add up to dollars. So. Well, what's the cost of enforcing something? We're not going to well, I mean, code if they're, if they're in that area, they're supposed to be the guidance, <coughs> you know. And so you have to go over the way, but during the day, they should be doing controls other places than where they want. But they've been too busy with too many accidents. It's just a little thing, but, but it adds up. statement that talks about why we do economic development and we can certainly ask them to um, put that in and the, and the reasoning behind you know, the mission statement basically talks about um, identifying the fiscal health of both its the citizens um, or the economic health of the citizens and the fiscal health of the town and our you know the, the job of economic development is to produce 
revenues, or, or one part of it, is to help the town grow revenues to pay for services. Yeah, so I think that would be great to articulate it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we kind of jumped into the chance to really... Oh, no, no, that's what, better, better you guys, your ideas first. Um, so any other comments? And I can certainly walk you through, Jay, you know, our comments. Mm -hmm. It might some more comments. There you go. Okay. Um, you know, and so certainly Jay had a, a question on um, what management meant, and that's really a terminology from the um, NC, the NAICS code, NAIC uh, code for um, um, what groups of businesses it includes. Um, so that's that's one code. So they they should they can spell that out where those targets came from, and then. I think that the, one of the big big things I'm always looking for is to make sure we're not calling for us to do something that we don't actually have any control over. Um, that always makes me nervous. So um, that's why this one section is highlighted here um, on page two. You know, it talks about the municipality putting out an RFP with local businesses on, and I felt like no, no. I understand what they want to do, but that's not, we don't own any of that property. Right. And I think our suggestion was, we can certainly work with businesses if they want to do something like that, but we're not necessarily part of that. Right? I understand what you're saying, but don't we also, are we using uh, low income offset credits? Or, so we're putting proposals out there asking for development that we're assisting with funding. Is that relative to this, or is that something separate? I think that's, that's something separate. separate. Okay. separate. Okay. This was really talking about getting the Oak Hill businesses together and doing an RFP. Yeah, this was really talking about saying, okay, you know, so you own this land, let's put an RFP out for what we can do with your land. Where I think what you're talking about is we have that money in the affordable housing reserve account. We have an RFP out that says, okay, we have 500,000. I hear what the number is. Tell us, tell us how you can best utilize this affordable right. housing providers. And it felt like the, the first statement really dealt with what we want to achieve and working with the property owners to you know, help them understand how they could do that. So I felt like this could be done. We just didn't have the right to be partnered to an RFP. Mm -hmm. um, a little known phrase, someone's politicians right now don't know, is that government is not a business, it's a democracy. And we have, yeah. and we have to think of this principle, government is not a business. So are you suggesting that this pink issue that we be moved? No, no. Is that it can it can be moved or um, it can it can be restated. I think I, I gave them if you look down and say, like, I, um, so they're like super low. Like the lowest of the low. Because I say that you know, and you're like, whoa. Oh no, that's perfect. Um, so I think what we were saying is um, we could possibly rephrase to assist local, local property owners in soliciting projects that would you know, incorporate development criteria, blah, blah, blah. So we're happy, if they want to do it, we can, we can work with them and, and help them. But we just can't be party to, the, or to an RFP. That implies ownership, in which we don't have. Uh, so that was the, a, a big piece there. Um, <laughs> And one of the things that in the last piece, they talk about um, incentives with respect to regional economic development, the regional economic development partners, and what I, I, I wasn't sure what they were really talking about. They talked about working with our, um, you know, uh, neighboring communities and our regional entities and developing some regional incentives to talk about these things, which is certainly a great idea. Um, but. This, I, I wasn't sure what they really meant by this so particular a different piece. different than a tip kind of thing? Yeah, so it, you know, we can, we can always work with, um, with our regional partners in developing um, approaches for recruiting or attracting certain businesses or agreeing to do things similarly. Um, like, we, we actually do have some uh, informal policies, actually, with uh, Portland, South Portland, and um, Falmouth, Cape Elizabeth, and Westbrook. About, you know, we, we as a policy don't poach directly. In other words, 
you know, somebody is looking to move or expand, that's great. But you we're not knocking on each other's yes. doors, you know, to somebody's business and saying, hey, have you thought about moving to Scarborough? Right. Um, that, doesn't, that doesn't build economic development in the region, and it usually means they're short-lived in the community. Now, again, that doesn't mean when somebody's doing a big expansion, we're, you know, we're right there, we want to help them. But yeah, if they come to you, yeah, or if we know that they're doing an expansion and it's, it's public or private, what we usually do, the, the approach that we use, um, is we will often say, all right, well, number one, have you talked to, to your host community? Because we want to know that. If they haven't talked to their host community. How serious are they really? Yeah, are. and they really generally get the best deal for the host community because they want to retain them. And we're less interested in them playing us off so but off the host community. And then if they have it and they have a reason and they ask us to keep something confidential, of course we're going to help them. Um, but we just, we're trying to be good, good regional citizens. And in the long run, I think that's better for Scarborough as well. You don't want to that race to the bottom where you're offering all kinds of exactly. rates and doorways. And it generally means that we wouldn't, it doesn't say we can't, but I don't think we would use a tip to lure someone who wasn't already interested in coming. That's not how we've done tips here. Um, you know, so again, working with our regional partners to talk about what are good incentives and how we play, how we how we build the regional economy is certainly a good thing. But again, I just wasn't sure what they meant by that statement. Uh, and then. Okay. Sorry, the age. I know. Um, so on culture, um, let's see. Oh, it was really talking about. There's a lot of discussion about um, entrepreneurism, <coughs> entrepreneurism, and we have generally approached entrepreneurism at Setco as you can be an entrepreneur at any stage in a business. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's not just new businesses that are entrepreneurs. Uh, we want all of our companies to behave in an entrepreneurial way. And so I just wanted to make sure that that was... Uh, I'm interrupting, I understand. No, that's okay. I'm a little lost. Um, so are we under support of entrepreneurship? Is that... We're under culture. Down to culture, which is part of the part entrepreneurship. Of, yeah. <clears throat> I have to go back up to... Are we, are we talking about perhaps using this verbiage as it is here in the actual product? Because I have, a real, I have an issue with entrepreneurial ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I mean, really. <laughs> it's just too cute for words. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I sort of felt that a lot of this language was it's, that it's way. It's cute. And you yeah. know, but sort but of that cute is not sort of trendy. Like Planet Palooza. Planet Palooza. It's very trendy. Oh, yeah, cute. Yes. And we're yeah. not cute people. We're but in 10 years, <laughs> you're going to be awesome. Speak awesome. for yourself. In 10 years, you're going to be the best to get to what you're saying, I think it does. It sort of it, it, it kind of presumes that entrepreneur entrepreneurial activity is is a startup yep. or something, and that's, right? That, and that would be the right, yes, which there's obviously a yeah. place for that. But um, and I also, I, you know, to the extent that entrepreneurship is is discussed, I think it might be helpful to have some grounding in data in terms of you know what 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 are the benefits of entrepreneurship and how is that even defined? And, you know, sort of, it feels like there's a lot, there's sort of a lot of, you know, platitudes in there. Well, and I think that's true. And what yeah. they really mean, uh, one example might be next to JoJo's, there's a space that has three businesses that share. Yeah. And did they go in as an entrepreneur and say, you know, I've been having trouble finding a location. Have you ever considered sharing this space because our business is different and we operate at a highest level at different times? I think they get into that a little bit. They do. Yeah, yeah, they do. Right. Yeah. Or can yeah. we, what can we do to help the town as a group of the business owners get more of the traffic off Route 1 to a rear, you know, and then maybe one of them comes forward and says, hey, you know, can we uh, I think that basically the, 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 the ecosystem that they're defining, I have no problem with it, we're, we're separating it out by calling it a system. You know, I mean, as you said, eco, um, entrepreneurism <coughs> everything in Scarborough, mm -hmm. there are a few places where you might say, well, I don't see it there. But basically, we're all look, they're all looking to expand in ways that are good for their employees and good for the community and good for the bottom line. And, well, and you know, kind of go along with that theme, I was reading down through some of this.
this, you know, when you look at the section where it talks about if you want to be an entrepreneur, you need to go out and you need to network. And we're talking about different ways that you can network. Which I think that's all good, useful, mm -hmm. nice stuff. But how does that as a town to promote these items? And, and are they suggesting that somehow we as a town start to find a way to enhance that? Or is it just a nice it's, 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 And it's interesting because I read a Harvard Business School article today, as a matter of fact, about how um, they were poo pooing the networking uh, groups and whatever because there's just people with the same. You know, they're all looking for business and they're not doing anything and it talked a lot about teaching people to how to network within their own, what we call spheres of influence mm -hmm. in my business. You know, as opposed to, yeah. you know, forced networking or, or VNIs or, or, or that sort of thing. Yeah, and I don't think they, I don't think they recognize that. I, I thought it was one of the things that we talked about, but um, the consultant, I said, you know, there's probably 40 different uh, organizations in this region that are, you know, help entrepreneurs or help small businesses. And so what we need to do is carve out what is unique to Scarborough that we can do. Number one, we feed people into these to these other groups. So we don't want to duplicate anything that's already out there. We do want to isolate what are the things that we can really make a, a difference on at the local level. And that's why one of the, you'll see somewhere one of the comments is, I do think that we can um, clean up perhaps some of our home occupation rules. I think we're a little clunky on those. And that's unique to Scarborough. We can do that and we can make it easier for people to um, you know, be legal in their homes with their, their home businesses. Um, and so they're working on that. They, that's one of the comments we clearly said back to them. You know, we want you to give us what are the best practices with respect to um, home businesses, home occupations, and the um, the people who are you know equally you know they, they have they have a business and their home and you know they're not necessarily the home is not necessarily the primary use they're not live work units they're not you know anything and there's more and more of that going on and people running their business in a separate building having their house. Um, and so I don't know that our ordinance is uniquely, or, or I'm not sure that our ordinance treats that in a most efficient way either. Affordability is huge for um, so-called entrepreneurs yeah. or small businesses. You know, when you get beyond the uh, you know, two, three, four employees, um, and, and but you're not big enough to have a whole space per se. That's why these co-working spaces Absolutely. are good and more and more mm -hmm. people are actually working from home even though they work for big corporations. Absolutely. But I think, I think it's important though, Ramona, we're, we're, we're looking at future use and future development. So I, I'm not sure we want to necessarily encourage in-house in businesses in a residential area with all the, you know, accoutrement that may come with that. It's one thing if you're, if it's an internal thing that he doesn't right. really, it's not noticeable exactly. in the community, but if you're a landscaper, let's say, or a, a tradesman, yes. and you've got three trucks parked in your driveway because right. you want to work out your garage, exactly. that becomes a problem, right. right? So how do you balance that? Yeah, right. totally agree. That's why we were asking them, um, throughout the country, you've seen best practices. Mm -hmm. We want to be efficient, but we also don't want to infringe right. on, on the neighborhood. Right. So, they, so they make uh, whoopie pies, yeah. and they cook them all up, and they take them out and deliver them. Right. Or they're, you know, that's something specific to Scarborough, or people who sell lobsters yeah. mm -hmm. out of their garage. Right, you know? right, right. So there's a lot of that. I'm still having confused. It's the It is. <laughs> I haven't quite figured out how to deal with it when I get these moments. What is, this, what is going to happen to this? Is this going to get somehow or another written up and included in the comp plan as a whole? Yes. So we, so we need to, in my, in my yeah, I'll need to do your system. I think that my, I, what I'm seeing here is that this sort of stuff needs to be honed down to like three pages. And I made that up. It could be less. Let's <laughs> 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 sure. sure. Two pages, comp plan, C right. below. Well, well, there's nothing really in here <laughs> that <laughs> is. It's, it's, yeah. It's it's wordy. Wordy. It is wordy. Yeah. Yeah. It's very wordy. It's very wordy. The kind of things that we've been talking about.
Yeah. You know, it's kind of thing. Yeah. Really looking for the document to just have more bite. Yeah. Just and, you know, that, get to it, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, and a lot of what we're talking about here are good ideas, but it's, you know, I mean, it's like, I don't, they may even be in here somewhere, but I just can't be bothered. I, you know, the, well, the, the best example in this particular document is, you know, they labored the co-working space, and yeah. for me, it was like, hey, three sentences on co-working is really right. all we right. needed. Right. Right. Yeah. Fine. <coughs> yeah, and support. Yeah. And it's two sentences. You need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Those things that we need to. I do think that it's going to be a working document. Correct. As with other sections we've talked about, to the extent that it can be grounded within land use yep. planning. Yes. Yeah. Please. Right. That's very true. Yeah. yeah. And, and even mm -hmm. as you talk about yeah, the land use and, and the growth, where, what's the name of the growth? Because we already identified growth areas, limited growth areas, and the previous growth areas. And uh, we're well, that's basically we're catching up on we're building things. Off that, yeah. That's not what we're talking about here, Dan. I'm just saying that this is this is, this is just filling space. Well, okay. I was going to say, quite frankly, to be negative. But when I read this, mm -hmm. I thought we change the word Scarborough to yeah, maybe, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah to generic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are some unique aspects that mention Seneca, but. Yeah. yeah. This is any town you would say. Let's pull that section off and plug in the scum. Yeah. And we'll fill some more space to justify it. I'm not impressed. So I'm, I'm not impressed with this. Well, we might want to look at, at, at her, um, at the first thing that we had, because those were all things that we were already doing, but in the, the way it was stated, she liked it, or, you know, that or maybe some explanation. <coughs> maybe it'll yeah. make more sense when we see it in context. Except that, you know, that I'm looking at, I've opened up the page, the, the spread of page 23. And it's sort of like if you took the titles, Human Capital Support System Momentum, and just listed them, but maybe a word or two. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, I know you read them myself that closely, but there's nothing yeah. to be said that that's not wrong to think about. But seriously, yeah. what, what a working document. That we don't find that intro that they called previously. So we, I, I think we're totally with you and, okay. and on, on that on that particular piece. Yeah. And, and, and again, it, it seems- Doesn't feel like much of a coffee table. I was gonna say, I'm not picturing people take, picking this up right. and reading and it off. That, that, that was sort of the, uh, yeah. the pitch, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is gonna yeah. be and something that's gonna be real to, Yeah, it's like a National Geo. Yeah. You pick it up, you can read a couple right. pages yeah. and put it down and come back and read it. There's gonna right. be flashy graphics all over this. Yeah. So. Right. Can't wait to see this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think they're going to come through in the end, but I think they're. I think this is just sort of this. They don't process yeah. after all this time. They really, quite frankly, I don't think understand Scarborough very well. Certainly. Well, but I, I mean, in all fairness, they're probably probing a little bit, right? So to, to Rick's point, they grab something off the shelf, they hand it, say, "What do you guys think?" Yeah. If we come back with and throw up all over it and we're at all over it, they're going to go, okay, these guys are paying attention. <laughs> if we go back, oh, yeah, looks great. Right. <laughs> then, okay, now we can, now they get an idea of what they're, what they're pushing out. Yeah. You know, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily uh, hold them to, to the fire too quickly yet on their overall, you know, performance, but I think it's all good comments to, to send yeah, that. It's June. Exactly. Chris. I know. I, thinking about the, the last month. Nine months. You know, the, the last comprehensive plan has served us very well. We didn't have anything that looked like this in it. You know, I mean, it was like a page that says we support entrepreneurism. Come to Scarborough because we want entrepreneurs. Yeah. Well, you need to Scarborough. But I think we do it. Yeah. We already do it. I was coming to Scarborough as an entrepreneur unique to anybody else in Southern Maine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand that. <laughs> you know, and I, I, I think one of the it's things that I, the, the community um, document said, the, the profile, was we have a lot of entrepreneurial activity, but we needed how to get people to move to the next step. And, and there wasn't a lot. There wasn't as much on that. And I. And I do think that, um, I think we're all struggling with the lack of, of incorporating some of the data points in here. Um, and I think with economic development, it's also about the other actors that you're working with. And I, I think particularly for economic development, you have to list 
you know, mm -hmm. the economic development corporations in the region and the, even the Great Portland Council of Governments, just all these other people who have roles in economic development. Um, <coughs> we use GPCOG's loan program, for instance, and this is the piece that I don't see where that's going in, in all of this. Um, and so I think we can I think <coughs> we'll share. Um, so what sorts of conversations do you, do you guys have with them uh, after, you know, I'm sure you're, you know, you're not just sending a markup. I'm, I'm assuming you're, you you have some some, some back and forth and dialogue. We start chanting. Yeah. And right. then we they, yeah. I mean, one thing that we found very sensitive. And so it is. Yeah. You know, I think to your point, like I think one Don't of the up it, it's the a little bit of tough feedback, and they it feels like a wall goes up, and the conversation becomes difficult. Uh, really? Interesting. Yeah. They, so so we're paying should, we a, should we put, a, a, so should we put a, uh, a phone in the middle of the next and have them put them on speaker for the next round? I mean, or at least tape it. Well, I, mean, I think we're, we're tape it, right? at some point, at yeah. some point, we're, I think we're going to want some access to mm -hmm. yep. what's your method, what's your thoughts, yep. um, where are you going, you know, we're, we're getting it kind of piecemeal, and right. I, I know I struggle, yes. right, but I struggle with how does it look in the yeah. overall yeah. package, package. Yeah. And and that's how I feel. I think, we, are, I think we are close, we had, we had an email communication from Sandrine early this week, I think it was, yeah. maybe it was the end of last week, Remember, but recently, um, and it sounds like the full draft is pretty close. So that's going to be a very, I think, as we've talked. Yeah. Is, is there, well, let's go say, is there money in the budget for them to show for the There'll first draft? Be, they, there is money for them to come back to town. Yes, yes. And we've talked about how to use that. This is right. this Make is sure we get it before they come. Yes. Right. So yeah. that we can right. review it before we sit down. This is to me a perfect example of why um, the difference between the way it was done before when it was all local, meaning within Scarborough, as yeah. opposed to going outside. Mm -hmm. If we had uh, the people who are actually designing this here, and we had a whiteboard, you know, we could take this and we could go through it and we could do an outline of what it is we like, you know, and then we could draw lines and connect them. This works over here, and this works over here, and then you've got something that the, the, that the um, person that we're paying actually can look at and says, oh, that's where they're trying to go. And to not hear this conversation about what you're saying about entrepreneurship is really about every place in Maine. You know, you're not unique. I mean, those are the kinds of things that don't get communicated when there's nobody here. You, you, you I don't, you know. I, don't know. I guess what are, what are those unique things then that you're thinking about that aren't in here? I'm not thinking that. Okay. I'm thinking there's a lot in here that is absolutely unnecessary. It takes yep. up a whole lot of space. It took a whole lot of time for them to do it, and I don't, I don't want it in a comp plan, which I'm going to give to somebody and say, so you're thinking about coming to Scarborough. Here's what we do, and here's how we do it. You know, I mean, but I don't think that's that spelled out when it, it's not totally spelled out. I think there's a lot of people that are even thinking along those lines. They don't know where to go. It's surprisingly enough, because I have a friend who went to Fedco. Um, wanted to do photography, and he, you know, because he was retired from his other work, he wanted to do photography, but Karen let him through that process, and now he, he took a, he, he applied for jobs that were in the field that he was working with, and, and he went out and he had nobody's been offering him a job. He's working for a company out in like Colorado. He's been working for him for six years at home in Maine. So she gave him the direction that he needed to where he needed to go. But a lot of people don't understand that. So that kind of expansion I, I see is good stuff. And when the citizens read this, they can vote on this. And oh, they don't read it until they go wrong. Well, I think it, it's, it seems to me one of the things that we can't do um, is, at least on the first blush, have them focus on those land use implications. And one of the things we said about this plan to begin with was it was going to be very systems oriented. Mm -hmm. And so the systems orientation, then it's that land use that's going to carry it through every chapter and how things fit with the land use and why, um, why it's so important. And perhaps if we can hone it down and help them understand that piece 
and talk about everything through that the future land use lens. And um, I think we can we can maybe short circuit some of this. I just think at this point, doing it piecemeal like we're doing is, is, oh, is, yeah. is way too more. It's it's too difficult because we don't see the bigger it's picture. It's almost better like even if it's a rough draft, yeah. to get the full package and then we can start digging in. Get it sooner rather than later. And to 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 uh, uh, Alice's point of just not having <coughs> you know uh, time sticking and get something in our hands that we can read, start really digging. We're like, here's your package, okay? and we know it's rough form. We don't, right. I don't expect them to be spot on. You know, uh, our, our communication is 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 probably inconsistent at best. We want details, but then we want big picture. But then we want middle picture. Right. But then we want it to zone up. But then we want it to be regional. But then we want it specific to one hamlet. So let's get a rough draft. You know, it, let's get a rough draft. Let's get, as, you know, instead of doing it piecemeal by section. Yep. Yeah. How did they come up and with I the think next it steps? Just so. in terms of sort of these chapters, I think we've talked about before. Really, it's as they're providing these. It's are there any things that are systematically wrong here? You know, you don't sort of the fine tuning is they're telling us is going to happen when they get the comments back. So that's. But well, it's tough for us to do like what Karen was saying. So pulling that theme through the whole right. pack, right. we, we're not seeing it. Right. Yeah. I don't right. know if it's listed on the next right. steps, no. but it might be that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they worked with Lewiston. They put together Lewiston's comp plan. Yeah. Um, so they yeah, London, Derry, uh, New Hampshire. Hampshire. Oh, They've yeah. worked in London, okay. Derry, oh, New Hampshire. Yeah. They, it might yeah. be helpful for us to take a peek at another town in Maine's plan to see how Okay. Yeah, I can send. I can send the link to the Lewiston. Lewiston is the one. That yep. That's, they they, they did do. They did help with. Um, I think someone mentioned Yarmouth, oh, but yeah. but that wasn't a comp plan. That was a form-based code um, mm -hmm. rewrite for Route One, so it wasn't. It was the complete streets. Yeah, uh, complete streets form-based character code. That's so really interesting. Just but, as an example of yeah. right. What does this do? You know, end of 2018. If you take a look at what, um, <laughs> yeah, right. You mean, and, and by follow. that you mean adoption by the town is what you're Yeah, what's it all supposed to be wrapped up? Yeah. I mean, the, so the, the technical piece, just so everybody knows, and Jay, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but as I understood it, uh, so, yeah, we need to have a plan adopted in 2018 is the, is the normal procedure. But if we don't have it adopted, it doesn't mean our land use codes are, are um, invalidated. invalidated. Right. Yeah, it's just a guideline anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, but you have to have a, you have to have a comp <coughs> um, as a legal requirement. As a legal requirement. But if we're working on one, the state's not going to hold. Right. They're going to say, right. "Okay, you're working on it. You've got a draft. You're going through your public process." Right. They're not going to say, right. "No." Is that not, is that true, Councilor, or are we just going to be like it's it's I mean, dropped there? That's it. There's communities so that have been yes. updated there since the night. No, I, so, I, 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 I just yeah. I think that the ordinances that have to be consistent with the complaint, yep. but I don't think the right. failure to meet the deadlines to submit a revised plan nullifies the ordinances. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, as Judy pointed out, at the end of this part, there's something called next steps. So that I just read down through them. It's like, I don't agree with all of them either. But if, they, if, we, if we did, just for the sake of discussion, use just the steps, the see if we have everything beforehand, and just use the steps, it's essentially a condensation of everything that was before. And it, it, you know, for example, it's like the business services takes off the sky was turned access to appropriate businesses for you. have creating awareness of entrepreneurs. I mean, there's really nothing in there that I don't agree with. And it does need to be in here somewhere. But isn't that, the question to them would be, for me, isn't that sufficient? Without, without all the stuff that went before. Right. Yeah, I think the only, the only oh, okay. piece in here that I would that I would for some feedback on is this uh, contemplate. <coughs> Uh, contemplate a Scarborough Business Improvement District. And I just feel like that's not really something that may make sense for us in terms of what they're talking about. Um, well, that's one of them. Yeah, so it, exactly, exactly. We've got corridor plans. I mean, you know, the, the concrete's a plan. It's going to 
point out where we're going to make investments. And, That's right. and I don't see us levying, I don't see, maybe I'm short-sighted, but I certainly don't see us levying a tax on a specific area. Oh, for a business a district. Like yeah. the downtown district. It's, I don't see that certainly in the next 10 years, but I could be wrong. But I just want to but land use is so important. It's got to be right? Could be wrong, yeah. <laughs> The last two has been an expand customer base for local businesses. Again, it's wordy, but what's in there I don't have any real problem with. Right. It's, it sounds like something that would look good and it would, it would be useful in a comprehensive plan. And then the last one, develop the Scarborough Creative Spaces Initiative. I mean, again, there's an initiative that isn't mentioned anywhere in our present comp plan, and I, it, it's interesting. Too wordy, but... And I, I, again, we'll say that, that's what I think the comp plan is, is to think up with suggestions of things that right. are new and different and useful. Or expand right. in a better way something new. Right. <coughs> so, so when we went into this, what we, uh, you know, one of the things we did say is we, you know, from an economic development perspective, I mean, we've got a fairly comprehensive plan. We've got, we provide a lot of services that I think other communities don't with respect to um, economic development, but we would really love to know best practices in a couple of areas. And one of those was best practices in um, have helping take businesses to a new level um, when they are in their uh, formation stages, when they are in their first year or two, helping them elevate. And, but not duplicating the 40 services that are out there. So that's one of the things we talked about them early on with that. And there's a little bit of that, but not, not as much, much as it could be. And then we talked specifically about home occupations, which is not in here, um, but they know that they need to do that. Um, so those are the two things that I felt like from Setco's perspective, hey, we could use some new ideas. Uh, we could use some new ideas. Um, you know, you know, it didn't happen. Yeah. Well, it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, right, it will. I, you know, I think these guys Possibly. can be really creative. I think they're just, I think they're trying to pump out racing the deadline. And I think with this feedback, it'll take it to a new level. I really do. Okay, I'll trust you. But I think that, you know, they, they must have put their money in the budget to right. bring them in before they have to crack the whip and do the fine thing. Because we're going to talk to face to face. Right. If we give them some good feed and yeah, be positive with it. I don't know if this is good. This looks like <coughs> Can we move on to the yeah, I was just thing, at which is yes. really much more interesting? <laughs> yeah. And, and again, I'll just talk a little back and forth. Okay, good. I'm, good. I'm just an observer. Anyway. And explain to me again, because I didn't get any of this. Explain to me again what we're going to do with this. Is this is this is not going into comprehensive. So again. this, so the return on investment tool. This is really a discussion around. So Karen and I, as of uh, again late last week or what day, let's say Thursday. So Early yeah, for Monday Tuesday. or Tuesday, we, we ha now have the ROI tool on our computer or on my computer. We're getting a laptop that we'll actually be able to bring to these meetings and do some pretty cool stuff with. So this is the, um, basically what the ROI study is intended to do. Um, so yes, you're right. This is not part of the comp plan per se, um, but, it certainly will so inform. Give, give me a rationale for how it's going to be. Before you, before you, before you, before you, I, I might suggest once you guys are comfortable with it, uh, schedule a workshop with the council too. Yeah, exactly. We're putting a lot of emphasis and, uh, and focus on this ROI for other development as well. So, sorry. Yeah. I took two. So, is that what this is done for? Was for the right. town? Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of, it's a, it's a little bit of a how to. Um, how do you, so as you probably read, particularly when you get to the last couple of pages, it gets really like, mm -hmm. here's, use this tool to do yeah. this. Right. I mean, that clearly isn't what this right. committee's interested in. That's right. what we're interested in. Um, but what this is, I think, aimed at doing is one sort of giving an update on what the tool is and what it's capable of, so that when we do sit around as a committee, what, what I see the role of, of, of the software being it, just that, the tool. So we'll sit around as a committee and say, okay, here, here's the type of things, the analysis we'd like run. 
and then Karen and I run off, and we do that analysis, and we'll bring that back to you. Um, and so I think this document can help give you, begin to give you a sense of what's possible, and as you can just say, Chris, I think it's a workshop. Of how this committee's going to use it? So um, the handout that I just did for you, um, sort of pulls a lot of the one, yeah. Yeah. The one I just pulled out some of the uh, pertinent pieces of the, of the um, document, because that document okay. was tough to slot through. Because it was very, you know, it's very, very policy oriented. So what this model is trying to do with respect to the comp plan, it can do many other things, but from the comp plan's perspective, it really is supposed to measure uh, the fiscal impacts of various patterns of growth. Gotcha. This is, this is what I was talking about. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. And then in that, um, what <coughs> they did in their considerations, they, they're looking at trying to do a build out analysis, although I will tell you, I got a little confused because at one point they talked about doing a build out analysis and the other part they talked about modeling to a specific number. So we, I think they did both, but um, um, so they talked about doing a build out scenario. They also in this identified um, the carry capacity of every lot by looking at you know wetlands, by looking at land that was already in uh, dedicated to open space, either through the land trust, um, and they also uh, took out any property owned by the town, which there's probably a couple of pieces that we may turn back, uh, you know, private sector. But for now, it's it's reasonable. So they they extracted out land that they felt was was not developable, and then they looked at the development status of the rest of the property, and so according to their um, assessment, and I think Jay worked with them uh, too during Planet Palooza, they've got, what, 21% of the parcels are developed and are not really in a position to be redeveloped at that point. 13% um, are underdeveloped, meaning there may be a piece of, there may be a building on it, but either the lot is bigger or, you know, there's, there's a potential for... So underdeveloped based on the zoning. Exactly, right. yeah. exactly. It's a three-acre parcel with a 5,000 square foot building. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and then there, were, there was the limited growth areas, which, depending on which scenario they were using, that's areas like um, West Scarborough, west of the Turnpike, where there's no sewer, it's not zero development, but it is limited. Mm -hmm. um, and then they looked at, um, sorry, underdeveloped was the first one. Undeveloped, obviously, is there's nothing on the property, but it's perfectly you know, right. situated for development. Um, yeah, exactly. And then uh, it's 3% is civic. It's really 2.55, but I am rounding up. Um, and then 24% is in open space. So that's the landscape by which they're you know, running the model. I'm sorry, could you, I, I, I think you explained it again. Where, where's the, the preserved <coughs> land and stuff? That's, uh, that, that's, in the, that's a hard number in the back. Ex exactly, that's, okay. there's se you know, about 7,000 7, acres in, okay. in um, land that was taken out of, of uh, the land. Yeah. Yeah. So as Karen said, there might be some <coughs> minor refinement to that, but by and large, the number's probably pretty close. I mean, so my question is, is uh, twofold. One, are we going to be able to adjust those variables over time? Number one, number two, do we have access to like the source code for the algorithm and stuff? So, if we get challenged on using this tool as uh, for future development, we'll be able to say, look, we're going to run this by the Muskie School. Let them look at the you know, algorithm and tell us whether it's viable or whether there's some there's, there's trust but verify kind of thing. Yeah. Right? So if we're using if we're so using mathematical calculations, we can get say, under the hood of. That's okay. what we've been doing. In fact, that's right. what Jay and I did some initial runs, and I said, mm, there's, 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 funky. there's still okay. some funky stuff in yeah. there. Okay. So we, we're, we're looking under the hood to make sure we okay. understand what the black box is giving us. Okay. And, and the great thing is we'll be able to say, people can, you can very easily see what all the inputs are. Yep. Um, and, and you can make, you know, it's... it's I'm not it's looking not, at variable, I'm looking at how we're doing accounts. Like, what, you know, if, we, if, we, if we're weighing something a certain way, mm -hmm. and somebody... Joe Schmo in the community who does this stuff for a living, let's say, goes, oh no, your valuation or your percentages are way off. Oh, your yeah. calculations are screwed. Oh, yeah. You know, no, we can go, no, we've had this check. Mm -hmm. You know, this is if it's subjective, we call it out as subjective and opinion or whatever, blah blah blah. But something to be able to, and I know that's not for here. I'm just saying. For, well, it is. It's important, um, you know, in in many respects because um, you know 
the first ground truthing of it is let's choose what's in our assessor's you know, files. What, what do we have? So that's the first ground truthing. We know the commercial properties are probably undervalued, and I think we've seen that. We, we're going to need to make some adjustments to that once and the rebuilds will rebuild. And, and, rebuild. and, and the beach. beach. Exactly. The beach. Well, we're doing the residential right now. As long as we can change the variables and we have access to the right. black box, I'm cool. Right. But you know, the, the question is too, we've got, you know, here's what's existing and then new development that's brand that's gonna be brand new, the town wide value may not be the right piece. You know, we may need to say, let's pull out this new office building. Is it more like town and country? We need to look at the town and country lot and see what that's valued at. So we need to make those types of adjustments in this. Um, and that's why the model is complex because it can do all of those things. We can we can go back and and um, run the base scenario saying this is if you use town wide numbers, this is what it would be. <coughs> Here's what we're changing and why. And it it becomes to, it begins to be important because the model's developing um, both costs and revenues. And so, for instance, if you have a more compact development, you probably have fewer road miles, so less public works expenditures. And so we can, we can tweak that um, and you know, look at those things. Um, so it, it allows us to do all of that. And then what they've done is they've developed what they call two scenarios. One is a trend scenario, scenario that says, we're going to use the development pattern of the last 20 years. And that's the trend scenario matches. If you look down at the bar graph, this is what they calculated as part of the trend scenario, what they are, what they're, how they're allocating um, development. And they took the last 20 years right. mm -hmm. and took it out to 2035. For the trend, for the two scenarios. So this is what they're predicting by 2035. Right. These numbers. But, <coughs> but just looking, and again, so there's two scenarios, and so yeah. just right. you know, talking about the trend scenario, yeah. which is what we've been doing. If we do business, <laughs> business as usual, this is what we'll get. Yeah, and then the alternative scenario is a little bit more compact mm -hmm. and has infill in it, and really starts to look at, um, you know, uh, higher densities in Oak Hill and Dunstan. Conservation and with conservation with growth, right? Mm -hmm. Right. That's what this says. We're done. <laughs> yes, that's what they they've called it. Right. Yeah. The alternative scenario really built off the 2016, uh, 2006. <laughs> sorry, yeah. we don't have a 2016 comp plan. <laughs> right. 2006 comp plan um, yeah. scenarios. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, again, the next bar chart on the on the, the second page is how the land suitability weighs for the alternative scenario. So that looks a little bit different. And one of the big differences is they're not using proximity to recent development. Um, they're using proximity to key development locations. In other words, we're picking where we want it to go yeah. instead of letting it um, go where development has always gone. And you can see this is where future land use designation shows mm -hmm. up. It didn't show up on the trend <coughs> scenario. Right, trend scenario is just let it fly. Right. Yeah. Right. This is good. And then the next piece was just um, showing you uh, the the different values. So you've got on on the right hand side is the um, uh, typical valuation per unit. So in other words, they're saying. Um, you know, the, uh, what, what? what? I know. Uh, Single family home average valuation is 235, yes. 333. What? Is that what, saying, right? what? Um, now? Or so the top, the peak, or the, that's the peak one, I guess, right? No, that's the yeah. average. Yes. That's the yeah. average. Where are they getting that from? Over in so the friends. Yeah. Uh, so on one side is average value per acre, and that's where you're getting the, the 1.2 million um, average value per acre for single family, assuming four dwelling units per that acre. What? That doesn't make any sense. Is that I'm today's sure. values? That's, let's look at this document. Because that ain't right. <laughs> um, And then multifamily units. Well, we have a $3.6 billion dollar valuation in town with how many acres? 
But this is so yes. that, that one point two is when you have four built out. That's yes. that's that's basically a, a quarter acre lot. Right. And so but is that with the house and everything? Yes. Oh, it's not just the land. Right. That's where I'm getting right. confused. Okay. Right. I'm thinking right. land right. use, land, right. land. Right. Right. Okay. And, yeah. and so the the next dot, but like if you look at the blue line, the the dot over single family is somewhere between it's just under the three hundred and eleven thousand dollars, and that actually from the uh, tax assessor, the average valuation of all single family units is somewhere about 305000 So that's what that blue line is, is showing you. Yeah. That's right. what so, the, so, yeah. The, so the brown rectangles go with the values on the left. Yes. The blue lines okay. go, go with the value on the right. But that's, that's right. current valuation, correct? Yes. So yes, next year it's going to be different. Because we're going through a revamp. Right, but Jim, this isn't a fixed number. So this is an no, output I know, from, but the, I'm from, just the, from the algorithm. There. So we're going to add things. We're going to change that. When we look at crossroads, we're going to keep plugging variables. I know, but I'm just time. asking. Yes. So this is based on 2017 numbers. That was yeah. the, when when okay. they were collecting data last right. late last summer and last fall. The best numbers we had were 2017 numbers. And so I think that's one of the things we need to remember. I think we've talked about this with this model. It, it is. It's just a model. These aren't. Right. Um, right. We're not going to get right. an exact number that says this build out scenario is going to net the town. You know, but five thousand dollars cost it. But that being we, said, which is important. Exactly. Absolutely. Because otherwise, you're going to skew your garbage result. in, garbage out. Right. right. I mean, right. it's right. very important. Right. I think Absolutely. that what you were just saying earlier is, is the point. I mean, it's only as good as it's used. Right. So right. don't bother if you're not going to use that at it. Right. Your right. 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 lines and dealing with the public sometimes is skeptical, to say the least. Exactly. That's why we, you know, we're trying to keep this baseline yeah, average. 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 This is what if you use the average of uh, uh, everything that's in the town, and we know that's not the right tool for new development coming in, but we want to run the baseline, and uh, and so you can you can see what's going on. And the, the next piece is really talking about, uh, you know, uh, the demographics associated with different units. So um, for every single family, the person's per dwelling unit is 2.3. Um, I think it's actually 2.3, a bit higher than that, but that's all right. Um, for single children per dwelling unit for single family, they're saying is 0.36, and we're we're double checking all of these, so we're that's we're, an yeah. a, that's an error. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's both. Remember, that's both um, the fact that not every single family home has children in it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, what we've got uh, the profile is just only what uh, just right. something. I think they just took the total number of children by the total number of houses. Mm -hmm. no. That looks, what you get. This looks like it lines up with the real estate statistics. Mm -hmm. Right. It See. better not be children. <laughs> I got rid of all mine. Get those three, three, three six out of there. The problem is I never know whose kids are in mine. <laughs> <laughs> and they're coming, they're 30 years old and they're coming back. That's right. Exactly. That's, right. That's, right. Right. That's my whole point. <laughs> and you know, and so they're using um, you know point two four kids per multifamily household and um, one point six people per household uh, for uh, apartments. I think it's, it's interesting if you look at again the Green Acres area, we're having a whole turnover because there are a number of the residents that live in that area that have passed away in the past. So they've months. gone to nursing homes. Yeah. Not into nursing homes. And so we've got about five houses right now still for sale. We've yeah. had three of them re you know yeah. flipped and some guy flipped one or yeah. wants well, to have a region But anyway. There's a multi family special use. Oh that? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Thank Senior you for asking. Yeah. Congregate care. There you oh, oh, um, yeah, it's it's, Mentally challenged. Right. Challenged. it's it's the type it's living that's not single family and typical multifamily. It's yeah, like, like Scarborough's terrace. Yeah, Scarborough's terrace. Yeah, that's the zero. Okay, let's Exactly. And so the next page are probably you know two of the most important tables in here in terms of running a model are are looking at results. But I did find them. I had to look at these for a while to make sure I understood what was happening here. Um, and so the, the first chart talks about revenues. 
And so for the base, the 2017 budget, basically they're saying between property tax and non-property tax revenues, we're looking at 84, 84 million. Yes, I think. Um, and then it's just uh, talking about the breakdown between property tax and non-property property tax being 72% is property tax generated, 28% is non-property tax generated revenues. And so then they look at the uh, base model, which is really the 2017 budget, so that's why those numbers are exactly the same. The trend, which is base version, this is what's added on with the new development. So the revenues generated for the new development under the trend scenario are 12.5 million for property tax and 7.3 million from non-property tax. So a total of 19.8 million. Now, if you want to step up and compare that, the alternative version, which is a little bit more compact, we go from 19.8 to 20.8. It's not a significant um, mm -hmm. difference, um, but that's the the difference on the future development. When you add those back to the 83 million base, that's where you get the, the alternative total. So that 20 million, 20.1 million versus, or 20.8 million versus 19.8 million, um, we, we reap a $1 million additional taxes under the compact scenario. <laughs> so, if it, so, if, so if I can just zoom out just for a moment from these, these, but Susan, you asked the initial question, sort of, so what? This starts to give you a sense of yeah. so what. It's now we can easy. say, all right, if we just do business as usual, here it is. Yeah. Now, now we can build all sorts of different this scenarios, exactly. and we can start mm -hmm. to see this the so what. That, yeah. Okay, thank you. It's very helpful. <laughs> it takes a while to get there, I know, exactly. but exactly. <laughs> We were led into this by the stuff that was sort of like a whole bunch of words that took us nowhere. <laughs> well, that's why I pulled these out, thinking this was easier to go through than the, yeah, than the much, words. Much more useful. Yeah. Because yeah. it gives you an opportunity to look at financially. Right. Where, where so, okay. Are we, making, are we making choices? Right. Again, again mm -hmm. there's only one, this is one, one measure. Mm -hmm. Right. One the toolkit. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. There's, there's other reasons how, towns how do things beyond mm -hmm. taxes, revenues, and all that stuff. You need but more than that. Yeah. That's right. And so the next chart looks at expenses. And so in the base model, it's 47.5 million total um, expenses. In the trend model, I'm just going to do totals for right now, 14.5 million. Right at the bottom, right? The, uh, oh, I see. So yeah, the, the additional. The additional, additional piece. Yes. 14 okay. to the yes. 47. Right. And so then that total, sorry, that I should have given you the total. The total then is 62 million, basically. And so under the alternative future. The numbers didn't change. The, well, they did. It's 14 point. No, they did not change. Did they? Uh, and. Actually, you know what? That may make sense because you're not changing the square footage that you're building and you're not changing the, um, it should change the road. Yeah, what? You're growing. Yeah. 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 It should be different. The are the same. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, education. Yeah, I noticed that. Right. Well, the education probably is the same because we're, It's the same we're, number of kids. Yeah, same number of units. In other words, they. <coughs> Yeah, well, but what it's they're a saying trend. is, a, it's not a hard number. Right, but what they're saying is, um, in the next the, 20 years, there's not going to be more kids in school. No, no, there there is, but there's not a difference between the trend scenario and the, the compact scenario. Right. The two scenarios oh, are about okay. where they are, not how many. Your public works does reflect it by about three and a half million, two okay. and a half. Million. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. So it's, it's going to have many less. Two. I mean, you could obviously play with the inputs on this. Right. Well, exactly. Right. You know, but, 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 but,
Uh, aggressive or pessimistic, it, however you want to phrase exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. Let's just put up the gates and shut the whole thing. That's it. No more development, no. Nothing. I'm trying. That's the clip they're going to run. That's what I said. I'm going to say, if you don't have to develop, then you can't have the development. I think you start to lose the development. You don't retain the same costs and the same revenues correct. over time. That's correct. So there is a change. Your costs go up, your revenue drops, yeah. or stays the same, but your, your expenses go up. Yeah. And so that's why uh, I know. just closing the doors. <laughs> it just was good to record closing the doors. Is not good. We but see I do if hear we can that. A very low growth scenario yeah. that basically says, all right, here's our trend, but what happens if? Right. What even, happens yeah. if we, we, we don't open up the gate? Let's well, see what these numbers yeah. are. Right. So that's a negative growth trend. Right. <laughs> once yeah, it start knocking stuff off, just to yeah, yeah. Right. That's, 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 that's a jump that people can easily make when you start to look at these numbers and say, well, look like great. Right. But it's a snapshot. Exactly. And I think what they're what they're saying is in both scenarios, the expenses do outweigh the revenues. Um, the alternative is a little bit better. And so that's why we need to, to look at that and make sure we, um, you know, part of, this, uh, part of this exercise can make us take a look at how we deliver these services. Can we be more efficient, those types of things. Right. And that's part of what this model will make point to. Does this modeling help when you're looking at potential tips, I assume? Yes, because it's going to yeah. talk about what, how much how much revenue is being generated yeah, versus value. costs. Right. Yeah. Again, it's, it's, a, it's a piece of information. I, I, I guess so, I could just really probably pound this a lot, but I, I, I don't want the model to get oversold and over, right. well, over exactly. to, to sort of be, it's the, not the magic hey, the, the model said this doesn't, right. well, okay. Right. Right. The model right. has its limitations. We need to recognize that. Right. Sort of I, think I, about, think I, yeah. I guess this group should look at is the model look at the data or the information that you want to look at. The council determines what they do with that data. One thing that comes to mind for me, which sometimes gets raised, is what about town's debt service obligations? Mm -hmm. Yes. But yeah. it's relative. Is it? It's right. considered. Okay. Yeah. I, I just want to make sure that it's, that should be in your expenses anyway, because you, you get. Well, I guess I'm, I'm coming from a, like in, in my world of real estate development, you have your, right. you have your, your, your revenue, right. your expenses, your NOI, and then you have your debt service that's right. kind of below that. Right. So I just want to make sure that however it's shown, however it's reflected, that it's clear that that's incorporated. Mm -hmm. one way or another. Yeah, I'm going to they, assume that's in your expenditure line because we've got we've got interest payments and expenditure as well as principal, and then when we roll over, um, it's not looking at that as a percentage. We, I, don't, I don't see a financial expenses category. Let, you know, it's maybe it's embedded in. In these categories, and, and <coughs> I, I, all I'm doing, all I'm yeah. saying is just right. you want to make sure that it's, it's clear a, that it's baked in. So yeah. let, me just, let me just make sure that it seems to me that again, I keep wanting to you know compact things. That the use to us as we go forward is to knowing that this is basically what the model is saying is that if we go to alternative development, alternative forms of development, that we can impact on the amount of expenses town has based on the amount of growth that we have. And that's very useful. I mean, knowing that it's going to cost not a lot less, but a little less to have alternative future development than the same, the same kind of development we've been doing for the past 20 years. Right. In a nutshell, that's what this says. And I think that that's an empowerment thing for us. And we don't have to necessarily spend a whole lot of time when we get to land use and what we want to Right. We want to uh, move around and massage a little. We don't have to be quite, you know, too terribly specific as long as we know that basically we're going to end up in a better place. You you don't, but I can promise you the council is going to want to see the uh, they're going to want to see the output, and they're going to want to use that as a tool and as a basis for making those decisions well, from a, from a larger perspective. So then when we give our feedback to you on the planning board, we're going to say. Either we're not going to push this project through because we don't think the ROI is good enough, or we want you to specifically look at that a little bit more in terms of. I knew I was going to be planning work for us. He's leaving the council. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. <laughs> 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 you said, Jay, it, 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 it is a tool, and there are other things that will that will steer growth or, or lack thereof. And there will be people in town who say, whatever the numbers say, I don't want any more trees cut down. Right. 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 And I think Scarborough is just fine. The way just the way it is. is. Yeah. And there are people who say that regularly. Well, they sure do. And they're going to say, if they say that now, it's just, I think this is another way for us to say, we've looked at yeah, that, totally and it's another, it's another factor that we can come back to, and we're explaining development to the public to say, this is an aspect that we looked at, this is how we looked at it, this is what helped us weigh in the decision either to go or no go. And, and the, the really great thing about this model, as complex as it, as it is, and as much as it made you know, our eyes roll back in our head, um, the good thing about it is, it has so many features to grow and so many ways that you can look at things. And you know, one of the things that we have to consider um, is by having more compact growth program, it may put growth in more um, lucrative or, or higher <coughs> revenue lots. You know, so uh, you know, in other words, instead of just continuing to develop suburban style. Right. Um, less expensive lots. If you start to compact, you get more. Right. You can develop. You get more bang for your buck. Exactly. So yeah. and exactly. So, so it it will be interesting to to be able to um, continue to refine the model based on what we know to happen when um, you know development takes place in um, the growth areas mm -hmm. and more in more compact ways, and it begins to change really the. The, the value equation within the state within the, the community, um, and you know we can begin the model lets us, lets us do that on an area basis. And every time I think of something that might get in the way on this, I realize that these figures were just from 2017. Correct. And you know, cause my brain said, oh, as soon as we bring the sewer to the other side of the turnpike. Uh -huh. Wow, this all goes way down the drain. Well, the, 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 form, the, the form doesn't go down the drain. I mean, the, the, um, the tool doesn't go down Right. Down this piece of paper does, but not mm -hmm. right. And the, the new or how or how you de, or how you decide you're going to going to do the land use right. on exactly. the other side right. of the turnpike exactly. is going to be critical. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. and I think one of the, the last underlying pieces that we're trying to understand too is that. Um, Right now, the model is talking about square footage or units on the ground. But if you do bring services or new development to certain areas of town, it changes not only the value of the square footage, it can change the underlying land as well. Right. So the value of that land goes up if you bring services to it. That's correct. And you know, and so that's the piece that I think is not included here, and you know, and, but we can include it. Okay. Well, and the citizens, they can those statistics say anything they want. Well, there are some people who don't matter what you say. Yeah. You can't, you can't win that argument. That's an argument. Just. Well, that's why you know, that's why us, you know, using it internally as an information tool and looking at the sensitivity, and that's part of I think the beauty of the tool is understanding, you know, comparison from one version to another, not just the exact right. output. Right. Yeah. 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 I always have a good face on her. Yeah. Oh, I feel better. This is a useful. This is really yeah. useful. So hopefully we'll, like I said, we have that laptop and we'll be able to do a little, you know, show you a little bit of the magic behind the yeah. curtain, just a little bit. Here. Is this going to be web-based or is this some? Yeah, it's, this a, it's, it's, a, it's a particular piece yeah. of software, correct. It's like a GIS. So there may be something that is maybe a reader tool out there yes. that yes. folks could use, but it wouldn't be the full oh, robust. I, I don't want it. John Q. Public on the internet. I really don't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Our oh, web is an app. Yeah. 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 Well, but, but it does make sense, you know, sitting down with a, a developer who may have right. a certain amount of, this is what I'm planning, and we can say, you know, you're not see what it does. Right. 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 And that, that also oh, frames your argument. You can see the council. Well, it, 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 it can help with people asking for density. You know, I would like a denser area, and I can do these things. And I would like a denser, uh, higher density, then we generate more revenue. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
start to see the changes yeah. that it makes. Yeah. Over time. So, yeah, right. And the, the model calculates change, or calculates value three ways, and you get to choose. First way, town wide. What's the average value for this type of land use on a per square foot or per unit basis? You can put it in. If somebody is coming in and they're building $400,000 houses, that's their price range, we can put in $400,000 and look at that. Um, or it can take, it can look at the surrounding parcels that have development on it and pull the price from just the surrounding parcels. I think it's a neighborhood. I would just say part, sorry, it, 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 I think it's a... It's a more focused area. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, surrounding areas. Um, and so, so that's the beauty of it. It can do all three of those um, um, types of analysis. Right. So I think, yeah. Yeah, and, and we have a... We're working with again with the consultants tomorrow afternoon. So we've got you know, a laundry list of questions that we want to make sure that we're clear on how just what this is talking about. This, this was this was the carrot. This was the carrot. We should have led with this one. Yes. This was the carrot. Yes. No, I like wrapping up. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I like wrapping up. So we know that they could produce carrot. Yes. <laughs> Oh, we know. took a dip. So this is so, folks. Remember at Plano Palooza, there was uh, Matt Matt Newcastle. I think he has a, a more southern accent. Um, and is he on a car? <laughs> um, so he he's the one who who does the who's doing the return on investment study. And then there was Brian who did more of the, um, the drawings, the illustrative works. Um, that's Brian, who's the consultant for TPUDC. Matt works is sort of embedded with TPUDC for the comp plan work. This ROI study itself and the software is a, really a separate project that once we start to dive in. At some point, maybe our next meeting is not the time, but at some point when we get a sample the new comp plan is going to look like. We've got to get the old comp plan in here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So that we can take a look at how it's working <coughs> now. You know, I mean, you make a statement and then you do all of these graphs. And Who then doesn't have a draft of the old <laughs> comp plan? Because we have them. <laughs> we can certainly provide them. I know oh, we have in the past. I don't know how we have them. It's a one line, but I know some people like paper. Oh, yeah. We have them. It's on the paper. It's on the paper. It's also on the paper. engaged. Okay. Yeah, it's on both. Widely available. Absolutely. Let me know if you want one. Do we can. Do we have a box of them? Yes. yes. We, we have a box We have, we have, we we have uh, two dozen anyway, if not more. I have one. Have we heard anything from the traffic side? From who? The traffic piece of the UBC. So we did see the traffic section a few meetings ago, um, and we gave them or did this, gave them comments. We haven't seen the revisions come back, no. All right. Yep. No. <laughs> so so we'll Jay, we'll see um, when it comes. I found the Lewis link. Yeah. And I sent you the link. Yeah. And you, maybe you could send it to sure. everybody. Yeah. But just for people, it's, it's like three pages, and then you press on that, <laughs> and it brings up the 260-page thing. Uh, it might be worth asking them all whether benefit us to not to read this whole thing, but at least to look at it and get a sense, you know, ask them, is that where we're headed? Or something along those lines. It's actually quite good. I mean I've thumb through it. It's a lot of history, a lot of discussion of what Lewiston's about, Lewiston's issues, Lewiston's problems, but it, it's actually it's pretty impressive actually. Well, that's but it would be happy to um, I might have a lot of nice pictures. Yes, <laughs> yeah. the cathedral. We're all going to get autographed. But, well, yeah, if they say no, don't waste your time because your plan is It's going to be great. But we, if they we've say moved no, down that's a that. decent yeah. example of an end work product, at least it would give right. us. Well, that's really good news. Some yeah. sense as to where we're headed. Yeah, I think Jane and I are convinced as well as some of the pieces yeah, are. These guys have done really good work before. And so we're, we're 
All right. And well, we don't need next Friday. Then. Our next scheduled meeting would be the last Thursday of July, right? That's First? Well, this is of complaint. This, this of right. and, but we're talking if it's long range. Long range, range it would be the, the first the Friday, the Friday, the third Friday, of August. The first Friday of August. The third of August, which is yes. the third. I have us having a meeting here on 26th. For the conference. That's conference. Yeah. 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 But I don't have any Friday meetings after the 6th. Well, we'll uh, have August Friday. the 3rd. Oh, August 3rd. August 3rd, yeah. yeah. Chris, you're on over First all of those. Well, we going. need to meet sometime. We're not meeting next Friday. We have to meet so prior to the third to deal with this secret uh. code of silence thing. Nah. No. <laughs> Oh, no. You don't want to just No, 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 no. It's just, it's just, it's just don't, yeah. Don't count. I, don't, yeah. Don't count. Yeah. I don't want to do it unless we. Don't yeah. ruin the surprise. Yeah. So, no, no meeting. So, you've got to build the No meeting next Friday, and as of now, rescheduling that meeting on call. On call. All right. Can you pass it out? Schedule the meetings. Yeah, on the get out. We have a town council. Okay. So, I would like, could you send me? When the next dates are for me, yep. for the next Karen few months. Karen has a nice little list that she put together and handed out a while ago. Can I have so, that okay. again? Do you have a great question? Oh, that's Karen. Karen. Okay. That's Karen. Karen. Yeah. 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 Doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So our next no. meeting will be 26th. Yeah. Here. 26th here. Yep. Correct. At 6. 26th and 6th. At night. <laughs> and that's the point that I complain. It's better than the second. That's the complaint. Right here, 6 o'clock on the 26th. Yes. I, I probably won't go. Well, now that you have it down, you've got to come. And the next one is on Friday the 3rd. There's yeah. a chance I could be uh, oh. out. I'm away for a month. What's the August meeting? 3rd. 3rd. August 3rd. 26th. Yeah. 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 We'll send out a, no, that old that schedule. Yeah, it's just some good no, it's just clarifying some lines, but the I just want to make sure I've got it in my We don't want to do it if, if unless we have to for next, we want to package it with other things. And it's, it's a simple piece. I don't see the help in my calendar. I need to be in the hot bottle. You're where? In the hot What? Any public comment? I was going to say, keep over in. We're adjourned. Folks, enjoy adjourned. Second. All in favor.